Aries, this is your week ahead tarot card reading by Born Without Boundaries Tarot. It's a message for Aries, sun, moon, and rising sign, Aries energy. So even if you're not an Aries birth date, it's fine. There could be Aries triggered in your natal chart and you don't even know it. What you do know is this message found you and it comes to you at just the right time. And this is where the message begins. We have Vulcan, oh, sorry, Vulture Spirit, Vulcan. <laughs> yes, nothing is wasted. Vulture Spirit for me is the treasure in the trash heap card. It's the energy of, oh my God, I've just been through crap. And I'm looking at, like there's this the rubble everywhere. And yet, there's opportunity here. And just the fact that you're in the mindset to be able to see it, is optimism. It's it's a sense of you're winning. But this is also a sense of you can look at a situation and see opportunity where others cannot. And things are about to clean up. There's about to be a cleanup in your life. Now, you could carry this literally and start actively doing it and that will supercharge the energy of actually starting to clean up your life, clean out the old stuff, or you're gonna get the opportunity to clean up stuff that has been attached to you or you've been holding on to. And I mean actual stuff. I don't just mean emotions or relationships. I mean actual stuff. Get rid of it. It will help you to unclog your energy. It will also help you share resources, right? Giving is the greatest demonstration of abundance that you have something to give. So there's nothing that's a waste in your life. And you're ready to be where you are and handle what's in front of you. So let's get deeper into what this, ener what this energy means, right, Aries? So remember, as I split the deck, Aries, there's going to be cards that fall out. That's fine. I'm going to leave them where they lie because that is part of the message, part of the process. If you need a personal reading, I do provide those. I provide many different op options as well. So check out my website. It's the only place you can book with me, www.bornwithoutboundariestarot.com. You can find the link in the description box or on the front, um, the main page of this channel. There's a, there's a link you can click on. It's bornwithoutboundariestarot.com. Sorry about that, guys. If you're just finding this channel now, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and help it grow. And then ring that notification bell and select all notifications so that you know when I go live. Because this is the only place where I go live and do free public tarot card readings. That's right. The only place. Aries, if you're sensitive to sound, I'm about to cleanse the energy in my space with a sound bowl, so you might want to turn the volume down a little bit. Let's give it one more shuffle, Aries, to see where we're at. Okay. Nothing is wasted, and then we have surrender now. It's interesting. This is, okay, 63, 9, 9. <sighs> Maybe it's not too interesting. <laughs> Moth spirit teaches us an interesting lesson. 
It teaches us that surrendering actually saves our life. It teaches us not to push. Now, Aries, it's hard for you not to push, but Mars is in Cancer as we speak, and you can't push in that watery in that watery realm, and it's a difficult position for it to be in, right? It's it's compromised. So, surrender now means yeah, you're not in a comfortable space, but if you keep pushing, you're 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 going to self destruct. When we surrender, if the moth, the moth doesn't surrender to the flame. The moth is drawn to a flame through impulses, like following its natural behavioral patterns. But if it just surrendered and stopped trying, it would actually float out of the light's gravitational pull and it would save itself. So surrendering is going to save you now. It's like being pulled into a riptide with Mars and Cancer. If the more you struggle, the more likely you are to drown because you're getting tired. Surrender, let it pull you out and then swim away. This is the key to success now. Nothing is wasted is here saying you don't have anything to worry about. Time hasn't been wasted. Your process, the year hasn't been wasted. You'll see soon enough. Let's get into these cards. We have Think on Your Feet. This is also Sagittarius energy. We've got a lot of fire energy here and Aquarius energy. Maybe it has something to do with Pluto. Think on your feet. Get ready to improvise. Planning isn't going to help you. Going on what your, your normal drive, your normal instincts, not going to help you. Allowing yourself to sort of wake up and improvise and be malleable. When Fox Spirit comes up, you're being asked by the universe, be malleable, improvise, don't predict, live in the moment. It's not about being reactionary. It's about being present. And then we have spirit has your back. So this is all a life path that spirit wants to support you on. And if you tap into your faith, then you can see and tap into spirit's aerial perspective. And you won't have to worry so much about not having direction because you will have direction and you will connect to that GPS system through faith. Um, this is the energy of actually luck can be on your side this week. If you allow yourself to let go and improvise and you'll figure out different kinds of um no, it's not even strategies. It's almost like law and authority is going to be on your side in ways that you didn't even predict right now. And maybe you feel like you've thrown things away. You've thrown money away. You've thrown time away. You didn't. This is, this, this, this is a beautiful energy of surprise direction and something surprising actually working out so let's see Aries what the play-by-play -play is because we're going to get the details um how does this week get, how does this week end up where do we end we have the king of pentacles okay let's see card is not flipped over so I can't tell I'm going to get into what leads up to this and we'll get into the seventh day so where do we all begin what is this all about don't struggle don't fight i know your natural instinct is to fight that's that warrior spirit but well we start out in confusion we start out maybe even being smoke screened this sense of there's a lot of crap that we're looking at none of it really interests us and trust your instinct you know, most of the time, people confuse confusion. They think confusion comes from having a lot of options. And no, it doesn't. Confusion is a symptom of not seeing anything that you actually want. Because I've never met anybody who was looking at what they actually cared about, what they're really connected to, that was confused even for a second. So when you experience confusion, it's because your mind's already told you this situation, what I'm looking at, these offerings, this selection, it's not satisfactory to me. So unconfuse yourself and let that shit go. There is something coming on the other side of it, which is either clarity or 
some sort of conscious breakthrough, maybe even some message that clears things up. But as far as day one goes or where you begin, don't settle. That doesn't make any sense. We have worry and fear and sickness and suffering or just stress. That's day two. What I think you, what I think happens is you finally allow yourself to give up on something and then you fucking worry about it. And then you get all kinds of crazy and paranoid like, oh no, like what did I do? Or something suddenly hits you full force. And you recognize crap. You start to worry or get paranoid about something. So that's day two. It's almost like you become inspired to walk away from what doesn't serve you and move into a new direction. Allow yourself in a way to recognize that this isn't worth the stress. Or... Unless you're being impacted by so much fear that you just give the fuck up and allow yourself to sort of be lost and confused. I don't like that. What's the moon card here for? Something's causing you so much stress. You decide to walk away from it instead of understand it better. Is that the right choice? Hello, what should they do on day two? Pisces, why is that here? Why is the moon card here? Clarify the moon card. Clarify the moon card. Yeah, three of cups is I don't like I don't like being around here. I don't, I don't I don't like the people I'm surrounded by. Maybe you feel like you have to hide it. You feel like you have to pretend like it's something different, but it's almost like you're keeping it to yourself how much other people are really bothering you. And, but they are. It's stressing you out. And it's honestly making you like want to just walk away. If you can, do it. Because this is definitely the week to surrender. If you can't, acknowledge it. Admit it to yourself. And then start making plans as to how you're going to actually get out. Because it's almost like in some ways I feel like you've been lying to yourself. Because it's based on the expected thing, the right thing to do. And that's the moth pushing toward the flame. You have to give that up because it's not honorable. It's actually self-destructive. And so giving that up is going to actually, once you accept it in yourself, even if you don't know what to do next, you'll automatically feel your heart get lighter. <sighs> yeah, you're ready to make a decision. A decision that you put off for a while, or somebody is, but it's coming to terms with it. Good on you. What about day three or step three for Aries? There's a new love, a new connection, a new offering. Interesting how when we let go of what really doesn't feel right for us, suddenly, all of a sudden, the space opens up. Oh, look at this defeat. Somebody's trying to keep you from being happy. That's what it feels like. That there's like a, a malefic energy that's trying to just like really mess with your happiness. And, and they don't care. There's an energy here in your life that the person doesn't really care if you're extending an olive branch. They don't really give a shit. Nothing is going to work in this situation. Like the cup that's being offered is going to be rejected. It's almost too little too late in some situations. Okay. Okay. I don't know what area of your life this is talking about, but not worth fighting for. And then we have the seven of swords. This couldn't, this, your reading last week was so beautiful. And now this couldn't get worse. 
But honestly, it's clarity, right? Seven of Swords is this is somebody's been undermining you. Somebody's been not backstabbing you, but taking from you or draining your resources or your thoughts. Have been, you just, it's like you haven't been seeing how you've been taken advantage of. And now it comes into consciousness. And what does Aries do about it? It's like as soon as you pull back and stop struggling or overcompensating, it becomes very fucking clear what or who you're dealing with. This could be a narcissist who tells you that they love you at the same time as they hurt you. And ultimately, this is a draining energy. And it's just so obvious. Okay, so what do you do about it? What what does what does uh what do they do about it? What do you want Aries to do? Give up, surrender. We are we already know that answer. Not even confront it, but accept it. Also a sense of maybe stick up for yourself or clarify it. You'll have proof. You'll have data. You'll be able to articulate it. You'll be sure of it. There's clarity around this situation. That's actually very hopeful energy. Not hopeful, but like very optimistic energy because it's almost like, once again, treasure in the trash heap. Nothing is wasted. All of this is crap, right? But why is it good? Because it's clarifying where the crap is coming from. Now you know it's clogging up your goddamn drain. Right? And you're willing to cut these ties. I bet. I hope. Even if it's not easy. Day five. Aries. Day five. Aries. We have a new start. A new opportunity a fresh place to plant, or new hope. And I think this is like the seed, right? The seed that you want to plant. Okay, what about day six? Um, we have competition. We have, it's like you just got to get yourself out of this nest of snakes because this is so low vibrational at this point. It's like, as soon as you get a new opportunity, people are there to try to tell you no, to try to tell you you can't, to try to get in your way, try to complicate things. Proceed in faith in the opposite fucking direction because honestly, five of wands is then all of a sudden met by six of wands. So there's just this sense of maybe there's an offer that comes through. Or a con I don't know, somebody's being concerned, or where is your heart really at? What do you want what do you want Aries to do? What is this fucking in in that knight of cups? Be clear. Say how you really feel. People will be very happy with you. Come out in the open, make a public announcement. Don't keep this to yourself anymore. Don't keep doing this alone. And get yourself out of that nest of snakes. Because. Because. Okay, we have a personal issue reaches resolution and a fiery climax approaches. This is Aries and Cancer energy. It's cardinal energy. So now it's telling you to take action. Yeah, it's going to be an emotional week. And you're going to want to be aggressive and confrontational. A personal issue reaches resolution that has to do with your family. There could have been confrontation within the family. And that's why these things are explosive and very emotional. There is going to be a, not a full moon, but a moon in Cancer that conjuncts Mars. So this is Wednesday when I'm filming it. And honestly, that's when it's happening. So there's just this energy of there's going to be emotions that come out and are finally spewed. And don't hold back. It's not that you're attacking. It's that you're just being honest. And ultimately, that's what starts the healing or at least puts you in a better place. Um... Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. It's a very emotional week. Emotional and confrontational and challenging because of it. But a personal issue reaches resolution. 
At least it, it, it reaches acceptance by you finally facing it and admitting to yourself that it's happening. So I think that that's the biggest struggle here is by trying to pretend like it's not or like something isn't, that something is, is right when it's wrong. And once you come to terms, oh, this also came out. I didn't see that. Full moon in Gemini, the answers you need are coming. Now, what are these answers? There's a lot of full moon. You know what that means? There's a lot of emotion coming out. What are the answers that Aries is going to receive this week? I feel like it's an in information or in conversation. Ten of Pentacles. Who's got your back? Uh, answers you need are coming with regards to money or opportunity or something that's firm or something that's secure. I don't fucking know. Let's continue. I want to see what these angel messages are. Let's go over to the extended. We've got to get into day seven and realize what the hell are these ten of pentacles? What's going on? Um, multifaceted. There are many layers and dimensions to the situation or person you're asking about, but it's in reverse. Let me tell you something. This is all very fucking clear. Stop making excuses for this person and go on to your abundance and happiness with your own stability and your own home. Um, because honestly, making excuses for this person is only setting you up to be taken advantage of some more. I'll see you in the extended. Link is down below or I've pinned it to the top of the comment section, Aries.